I forgot my bed was broken. Hello? Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm going to get dressed. Um, this is honestly uncomfortable for me. I feel so awkward, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I don't really know what this is. I'm not going to try and label it anymore because I've been trying to label stuff in my head and it's just not working for me. So it is what it is. I don't know what it is. Who cares? I'm going to just talk about how far I've come in the past few years I suppose. I'm 20 now. I've got the brain of a child honestly. I don't know where to begin. Ugh. I'm back with a list. I'm just gonna catch you up on my life so far from year nine onwards. Year nine I moved down from the Midlands to Devon with my family obviously. I was 12 when I moved down. I moved to a much smaller school in Devon, which I wasn't used to at all. All around the school, I was seeing a lot of mental health posters. And I was all new to this because I hadn't heard anything to do with mental health really in my old school whatsoever. Unless I've just blocked it from my memory, I don't know. <laughs> so I've seen stuff about anxiety and depression on the walls and I was thinking, what is that? I don't know what that is. So obviously learned a bit about it. Realised that, ah, that's probably what's going on in my brain. I would hate to wear shorts. In PE, it made me feel sick to my stomach wearing shorts and showing my horrible legs. They were just legs. They are just legs. I'd always, always wear trousers. This is very TMI. So if you're not interested, don't watch. <laughs> So I had really bad periods when I was growing up. I've always struggled with periods, okay? In year nine, I went on a pill to stop me from having such heavy periods. I would bleed through a tampon, a pad, my pants, my trousers, and onto the school chairs. The embarrassment is unreal. I went home quite a lot of the time because of how bad my periods were. It was just yeah quite awful if someone happens to be watching this somehow and they've struggled with periods just know that it's it's okay don't feel so ashamed about it i know it feels disgusting and you feel gross and horrible but it's it's a natural process that happens even if it's just one person watching this and you've suffered with periods you were not alone. I'm happy to talk about it. In year nine, I was not, I was not happy to talk about it at all. Once I started the pill, I started getting a lot of symptoms. I would be doing swimming lessons and I would just panic. My friends had to like crowd around me and help me out of the pool because I could not breathe properly. If you've ever had a pan panic attack or an anxiety attack, it's just, you know it's not fun you can't really breathe your heart's racing you can't see shit i can't see shit anyway right now i can see a green splodge on my phone everything is just so blurry so that in a pool not seeing anyone i don't know who's looking at me i don't know who's talking about me i don't know what anyone's thinking i can't read lips i can't hear properly because it's loud it's just wasn't fun I started to feel like I didn't want to be here anymore. Year 9 to year 10, I was not in a good place mentally whatsoever. I was not confident. I had my moments. Once my parents realised how bad my mental health had got, um, we went to the doctors and I stopped taking the pill, which helped calm things down a lot which was good. I kind of went back to being normal, not having panic attacks as much. Year 10 and 11, this was doing GCSE work. I was excelling in art and design. That's pretty much all I remember from year 10 and year 11. I would just be 
in the art classroom doing my art because I absolutely loved it. That was like a safe space for me and I didn't even realise at the time. I just loved it so much so I'd spend any spare time I had doing art, doing GCSEs, choosing colleges. I was thinking health and social care purely because I wanted to help people. So I was pretty much set on doing health and social care. I didn't take health and social care in school. I didn't know what I wanted to do but I knew I wanted to help people. And then one day I was discussing my college choice with my art teacher and she kind of went well Katie why don't you do art in college and a light bulb just went in my head I was like oh my god yes why why did I not think of that actually because I'm good at it I know I'm good at it and I love it so why not go for that basically I ended up choosing art in college in college and year 11 in that time gap that is where I started learning about self-improvement and I was focusing solely on self-improvement. I was like, I need to be a better person. I want to be a better person because I didn't like who I was. I was quite neg- I was very negative, actually. I hated the way my body looked. Yeah, so first year of college, um, I was doing art, which I absolutely loved. I was very confident with people because I in that summer before college, I was learning a lot about confidence, watching TED Talks, you know, just actively trying to improve myself and rewiring my brain into liking who I am. When I would look in the mirror, instead of going, oh my god, I've got a spot on my face, oh, I have wrinkles, oh my god, the bags under my eyes are so big, oh, I look so disgusting, oh, my hair is so awful. If I would think like that, I would be like, no, I'm not having that. My hair looks fine. I look fabulous. I feel fabulous. I don't care about this little spot. It's okay. I love how my hands work for me. They always pick things up and they never fail me. I love the way my body is. It helps me eat. It helps me sleep. It helps me live. It helps me move. Even if you can't find anything physical about yourself that you like, which is such a shame, say things that you are grateful for for your body doing whatever you say to your brain it believes and it will find proof of when i was improving myself i was lying to myself which sounds dodgy and sounds like something you shouldn't do but it's actually to help myself believe that i loved myself so every time i caught a glimpse of my reflection instead of judging myself, or actually, to start off with, I would judge, and then I would catch my, the little niggling voice in my head, I'd catch it and be like, no, these are five things that I love about myself, or I would replace those negative comments with positive ones. The more you tell yourself you love something, the more you will love it, but genuinely fake it till you make it. Anyway, that was a bit of a um, tangent. So in my second year of college, I went back on a pill because my periods were getting bad again. I ended up not going in for a week because I could not leave my house. Instead of not wanting to be on the planet this time, on this pill, I did not want to leave and I was convinced that everything in its power was trying to kill me. It got to the point where I couldn't leave my house, so it didn't just happen overnight. I would go to college and I would see danger of death and in my head it would be like a film. It would be like zooming in and like doing that with the sign going danger of death. Anything that could be slightly bad, my brain would just be like, oh my god, something bad is going to happen. I just had a feeling of doom and dread pretty much all the time until... I was sat on my sofa, crying my eyes out in my head, counting down the minutes, the seconds, until I was going to die. Even though I hadn't been told that I was going to die, I was just convinced that I would die. I had a massive headache, these headaches like in the back of my head, just, you know, above the nape of the neck. Such intense pain, I thought, I've got a brain tumour and I'm going to die. And I... Did not leave the sofa for for ages 
a whole week I didn't go into college, I didn't tell anyone, I didn't message any of my friends to say, hey guys, I'm feeling like crap, I'm not coming in. My parents got rather worried about me, I think. So I went to the doctors with my mum and the doctor basically went, so what's wrong? And I was like, I'm convinced I've got a brain tumour, can you check? She checked if I had a brain tumour, she checked all my bloods and blood pressure and everything she checked everything and she was like you're absolutely fine physically and I was like are you sure because there's something wrong and she told me to tell her a bit about my symptoms and my mum was telling her how I've been and she went oh yeah that's um that's anxiety I just couldn't believe it to be honest with you I've never had a professional tell me that it's all in my mind basically because that's essentially what it is it was a relief to hear that because I knew there wasn't anything physically wrong with me. I asked about the headaches and she said, it's because I've been so tense about dying. My shoulders were always, I was always tense. It built up so much that it just caused a massive headache. It was a tension headache the whole time. And I did not realize until that point how bad anxiety could get. No one had ever really told me, you know? I ended up stop taking that pill which helped again i kind of went back to being normal again somehow after stopping that pill i got back on track basically i carried on with my self-care and i was trying to say yes to more opportunities just to build my confidence through doing that I met a boy and we ended up going out quite fast without actually getting to know each other, really. And then Covid hit, so I spent pretty much all of 2020 with this guy. That's a whole other story. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the best time emotionally. I worked for both of his parents, um, which was very, very nerve-wracking for me. I was like, you know what, this is another opportunity, I've, I'm going to try and build my confidence doing this. I did build confidence, definitely, which I am grateful for, I gained a lot of confidence. And then um, in the September, after a couple of months of working for his stepdad, I found out that he was cheating on me. Um, obviously, I left the jobs working for his parents because, well... So I had no job, I was applying left, right and centre, didn't really get much response until one night I did get a response from a supermarket which I am now working in. When I applied I was nervous, when I went for the interview I was nervous, obviously, natural feelings. I was just taking this as a I'm going to grow in confidence and I absolutely have so much. So I was scared to drive there, I was terrified of driving my confidence levels were flat on the ground maybe even under the ground they just weren't there you know my confidence built up I got used to the route and everything and during this time of starting work in the supermarket I met my current boyfriend who lives in the Midlands <laughs> coincidentally since being terrified of driving from there absolutely scared to drive 20 minutes down the road, even two minutes through town. I was absolutely terrified. It's a tiny little town, but I was so scared and I felt so sick and anxious every time I would do it. But now I have driven to the Midlands, back from the Midlands, around the Midlands. <laughs> I've driven around Stoke-on-Trent in rush hour. I've driven around a lot of places, all because of my lovely boyfriend. My confidence levels I wouldn't say a through the roof, but a very, very high up there. Basically, overall, I'm a completely different person in many aspects of life. So I suppose this is it. <laughs>